Okay, so Raspberry Pi Imager is a great way of writing your OS for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, on the Mac, we have version 1.81. On Windows, we have version 1.81. But I have a much older version on my Raspberry Pi. But let me just show you uh, one of the reasons it's really good. So if we go to choose a device, uh, you can see that we can now pick Raspberry Pi 5 because there's not very many images for Raspberry Pi 5. So rather than trawl through all of the operating systems to find they're not available, it's a nice, easy, quick way to get there. Let's just go into screen capture on my Raspberry Pi 5 because I've downloaded all the versions. So this is the one for Ubuntu, this is the one for the Mac, and this is the one for Windows. And you can see all of them say 1.81. But if I launch Imager, I've got 1.75. Now I have also updated, so let's just show this. Let's close this down. So if we go into terminal, sudo apt update, it tells me everything's up to date. So I'm going to try sudo apt install rpi-imager. It says I've already got the newest version. So what happens if I try and do that Ubuntu download? Is that going to work on my Pi? So we're going to downloads and let's click on this and see if it will install. That's weird because it says remove here. Okay, let's try and remove Raspberry Pi Imager. Remove. And yes. I if it will show up here quickly. So it doesn't show up there initially. Let's close that down and do that again. Install. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, it doesn't like it. I guess it's probably for the x86, x64 version. Uh, and for some reason, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have the latest version of Imager. So let's just install that back in again, because it's obviously very useful. And if I try and launch it, yeah, 1.7.5. So I guess I'm gonna have to show this in Windows. So let's close it down and start it up again just Imager and get rid of all this around the background. So images on the bottom here and yes. So choose a device and you can see Raspberry Pi 5. So let's click on that and let's see what's available. Choose OS. So Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, that's the main version I've been using and the version I use for my KDE build. There's a 32 bit version here as well. Interesting. Uh, we've got Raspberry Pi OS other so we've got a 32-bit light, 32-bit full, 64-bit light, 64-bit full, other general purpose OS. So Ubuntu, which I've done a video on, which works very well. So the server version without the graphical user interface, and this one is the one with the full known desktop. This is the bootloader, restore the factory default settings and change boot priority because you can choose to boot from USB now instead of SD card. I like to keep it on SD card because it's what I'm used to uh, and I mostly use a USB device. So it's nice to be able to just switch by putting that SD card in the slot, but others may do the opposite. Uh, arrays is just very useful. That can actually fix quite a lot of SD cards. If you've got a problem with an SD card uh, with another system on it or something, just put it through arrays and uh, it's fixed cards for me in the past. And use custom, well this is the same as it's always been. So in my downloads folder you can see I've got probably no Raspberry Pi images in here because I generally use my Raspberry Pi to write for Raspberry Pi. But it does write for other systems. So if you're writing Linux for an Orange Pi or many other single board computers then you can use Raspberry Pi Imager and it recognizes lots of compressed files which is great so you don't need to unzip it in most cases. But also if we pick an operating system, so let's just pick Raspberry Pi OS, uh, have we got the cog bit here? Yeah, we don't actually have the cog to be able to alter that operating system. Maybe you get it when you choose the storage. So have I got any storage in here? No, I haven't. Let's just plug something in. I'm not going to write to it, so it doesn't matter what I plug in. So just plug in a USB stick. 
So if I click on that, okay, so this version doesn't have the cog, which is where you can preset up your network and everything. I didn't know that on the Windows version. I generally do it always on Raspberry Pi uh, or my Mac, because um, I, I use Windows less really. And I've just checked and it is the same on my Mac. So let's go back to Raspberry Pi. Okay, so back on Raspberry Pi uh, and I've got, what's this icon at the top? I can see this is Wayland, um, but what is this? It doesn't have it doesn't tell me anything and it just puts a little dot on it i don't i don't know what that does anyway uh choose os uh, so 64-bit raspberry pi and then you can see you get the cog which we didn't get on mac os or windows if we click on it then you can customize uh, so you can basically change all sorts of things so you can set up the host name uh, enable ssh so remote access and set up passwords for that configure your wireless network so basically you can set it up that you start up your system and it's already configured for wi-fi which can be useful if you haven't got a mouse or keyboard set the location settings play sound when finished eject media when finished enable telemetry so uh, we do have extra functionality in the older version the 1.7.5 but it would be really nice to have that specific raspberry pi device option and I guess it's coming soon. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.